On today's episode, I have a good friend, founding pastor of Gateway Church, my colleague, John Burke. How you doing, John? Good. Excellent. Good to, good to be hanging with you. I know. It's kind of a, a funny setting. We hang out at Gateway all the time, but here we are in Zoom. Thank you for taking some time to visit with the church leaders that listen to the Post-Christian podcast. Talk about Imagine Heaven and now Imagine the God of Heaven. This was a real critical part of your coming to faith as a young man, near-death experiences, the medical journals. Uh, talk about what you've discovered about heaven over the years and, and why it's such an important part of what we do at Gateway. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I know that it sounds really weird. And in fact, when I, when I wrote Imagine Heaven in 2015, I told the Lord, okay, you know this may be the end of my ministry, but here goes. <laughs> um, because near-death experiences, which for those who don't, I mean, you've probably heard about it, but I'm talking about when people clinically die, like their heart stops beating, no brain waves, um, verified sometimes five minutes, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes hours. And yet either modern medicine, or in some cases, it's just miracle, brings them back. And they talk about a life to come that they say is more real than anything they've ever experienced here. Well, when I was still, when I was an agnostic, so many, many moons ago, my dad was dying of cancer. Um, I didn't believe in Jesus. I, you know, I just didn't care about any of it. And then he's dying. Someone gives him the very first research on this. And I read it. I saw it on his bedside table. I read it in one night. And here are about, you know, 70 or so people saying the same things um, when they clinically died. And that just, it just, Honestly, it opened my mind um, to go, man, okay, well, maybe there's evidence about this stuff. And and it was a year later that I got into a small group, group Bible study and started studying the scriptures and came to faith in, in Christ. Um, for the last 35 years, well, I, I, I ended up going from a career in engineering into ministry, but for the last 35 years, I've had this insatiable curiosity, like what are these near-death experiences, and how do they tie to the scriptures? And that's always been my, um, you know, my aim is to try to figure out how do these tie together. I gave my first evangelistic talk on this at the University of California, Santa Barbara in 1989. So I didn't just uh, like, oh, this is a hot topic. How can I write a New York Times bestselling book? It, it wasn't that at all. Um, and the reason uh, I've written this new book after eight years, I didn't think I was going to write anymore, um, as you know. And then the Lord uh, made it clear, no, uh, this is what he wants me to do. And really, the book is about God. It's a book about God. It's his, it's his story throughout history in scripture, his great love story, his attributes, his character, and how what these people are saying when they come back from clinical death all over the world is they are saying the same things about this God of light and love who's personal who knows them who gives them a life review some of them some of them know he's Jesus um they, they don't have any doubt some come back and discover he's Jesus and I believe that this is God's testimony for such a time as this I think he is in our in our age of globally, you know, people are globally connected. So you can hear stories like this all over the world. But what's not being done is bringing it together with God's revelation throughout history and in scripture. And that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, as you know, we've we've seen thousands of people come to faith. Uh, people are real open to NDEs. My my Hindu neighbors next door, really open uh, to, to considering NDEs. Uh, people aren't always open to heaven or to Christianity. But when they start to see how they tie together, um, it really helps people see, okay, this is the same God. It's fascinating. The first book, I have to admit, all those years ago, uh, well, I was skeptical. I mean, I I wasn't sure, you know, NDEs kind of have a, a bad rap, but what you really have done well 
is taken what medical science includes in these journals and all these similarities and compared it with the scriptures. And so we've done a sermon series back in 2015 called Imagine Heaven. Then we did What's After Life happened to be kicking off right as the global pandemic <laughs> was oh. going through, which was great for book sales for attendance. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, even now, as we start up a new series this week, which I want to encourage you, if you have friends or family that are skeptical, send them to live.gatewaychurch.com at 1 p.m. Central Time, the next four Sundays, and you can watch these really amazing messages with interviews and biblical insights. Talk about how you've been able to um, use this message to such a skeptical world and maybe even some advice for pastors who might want to do something like this at their church. Well, I mean, I think the first thing to realize is that this is this is not uh, a one-off kind of deal. Um, Gallup poll did a survey of Americans years ago, found one in 25 had had a near-death experience. In 2019, uh, the European Academy of Neurology reported on a study done across 35 countries that found that 5% of people have had a, a near-death experience when they were close to clinical death or clinically dead. Wow. 900 scholarly articles have been written by medical professionals on this. So this has convinced many skeptical cardiologists and oncologists and other, other doctors. There have been, there have been Journal of American Medical Association, uh, JAMA articles, The Lancet, uh, Europe's most prestigious journal. And in you know, now they're always there. They're, you know, CNN came out with an article just uh, a, a month or so ago and everybody was bombarding me. Hey, did you see this? You know, because yep. CNN's headline was near death experiences are in the dying brain study shows. Well, the article didn't even show that. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was it was ridiculous clickbait, because if you read the, the article to the bottom, what they were saying is that when when a brain dies, sometimes there's still blips even an hour later as they're doing resuscitation. They're trying to get the body back going. But of the 500 patients they studied, only six had claimed to have an NDE and none of them had the brain blip. So there was no correlation. But chapter two of this new book, Imagine the God of Heaven, I go through the 10 points of evidence that convinced me and that any alternate theory has to take into account, or they're just throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping it's not that the soul survives and there really is a God. Mm. And I think as Christians, we got to remember this. We need to be speaking into this biblically, not running away or going, oh, you know, heaven tourism, everybody's trying to make a buck, just, you know, I've, I mean, I've heard it all. But this, I believe is God at our point of interconnectedness globally showing that he is the God of all nations, just like Genesis 12 and Revelation 5 tell us, right? The whole story of the Bible is the God blessing all the nations through the Jewish people, through his word, through the Messiah, and ultimately every tribe, tongue, and nation worshiping him around the throne. And so, you know, that's what I think we have the opportunity to show. And the world is curious about this, but they, they don't know how it connects to the God of, of Scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and that's why I love, you know, what we're doing here at Gateway, what other churches have done by using your book. In fact, 300 churches here in Austin were using your book as a way to introduce the city to this idea of a loving God who creates a uh, creates us for relationship and that relationship continues after we die imagine heaven.net you can pick up a free copy of the audiobook with the purchase of the new book especially if you buy it before it comes out and i just am so excited about this uh, sermon series at our church how have you seen other churches use this series because you you deal with some really difficult topics. I mean, the books talk about hell. Some of these experiences are hellish experiences. And yet yeah. there's also Jesus is the only way into this 
relationship with God? Like talk about some of the ways you've seen churches use this well. Yeah, I mean, um, there have been a lot of churches that have done sermon series over, over the years, um, and I've gone and spoken at a lot of churches, and I mean, it. I, I always tell them, look, don't make this just for your church. Tell them, hey, we're going to hear from people tonight who have clinically died and come back. You know, you ever heard of near-death experiences? Everyone I ever talked to is like, oh, yeah, that's fascinating. Well, come. And, and the, the church packs out and we see so many people come to faith by the end because you're hearing me weaving the, the scriptures through as you hear the video testimonies of these people and they're credible people. That's the other thing. They're surgeons, they're, you know, they're, they're commercial airline pilots, they're lawyers, uh, you know, nurses. I mean, they don't, they don't have anything to gain making up crazy stories like this. And and so we have, you know, other churches have used our video clips and basically uh, also taught it themselves like, you know, like I have. What I'm super excited about, Eric, of this new book, Imagine the God of Heaven, is that God brought me stories from every continent and every religious background. So in and, and you can go you can go download the first three chapters out on ImagineHeaven.net. Um, or you can go to imagine the God of heaven.com, either one. Uh, but you can you can uh, download the first three chapters. And in that, there's a Hindu engineer uh, who who dies and this brilliant God of light takes him to this place where he is looking out over describing this giant compound, thousands of miles square, beautiful, tall, high walls inside. He calls the mansions, big buildings of otherworldly material, just gorgeous, he said. And I long to go in. And, and, and then he said, and there were 12 gates. And, and he says, you know, your eyesight is like telescopic there, um, which is a commonality of indie ears, which Christians might go, oh, that's just very new agey. Except remember in Revelation 21, John is taken in the spirit to a very high mountain and looks out over the holy city and somehow from a very high mountain reads the names mm -hmm. on the foundation stones and over the gate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so th this is what they commonly say. It's like your eyesight's telescopic. So he counts these 12 gates and says it's a square city, thousands of miles in size. And then he looks at the nearest gate and he sees angels guarding it. And all the gates are closed to him. And he realizes I'm looking at the kingdom of heaven and he desperately wants to go in. Anyway, the story goes on as he sees who he now believes is Jesus on his throne, but he just knew this is almighty God. And, and, and the Lord says, I'm, he, first he gets, a, he gets a, a vision of hell first, then he sees this, he gets a life review and he's just saying, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord, because he sees all his sins. And then he sees what he calls a very narrow gate open to him into the kingdom of heaven. That was the only gate open, this very narrow gate. And this is a Hindu guy saying this. He didn't even know. He was describing it as a giant compound. And you know, you and I have been to India. There are compounds, walled compounds everywhere. Yeah. He's describing the holy city in the book of Revelation. And he comes back and he comes to faith in Jesus. Wow. I have another uh, Hindu anesthesiologist, chief anesthesiologist of the Bakerfield Heart Hospital, who also has a hellish experience, cries out for forgiveness, is taken, he said, by two Christian angels to this God of light and love who gives him a life review. And he later again sees that God who he said, I had a feeling maybe he was Jesus. And this brilliant God of light, he asks him, who are you, Lord? This is like, this is like Paul on the Damascus Road, right? Paul was killing Christians when this God of light appears to yes, him. That's right. So, Rajiv says, who are you, Lord? And out of the light, he says, steps Jesus or in a robe with a beard and says, I'm Jesus, your savior. And he falls to, the, to his feet, to, to his knees. Mm. A, a Rwandan imam, almost same story and sees Jesus rescue him. A woman in Tehran uh, who... I, she told me this through a translator. She was telling me in Farsi. Um, she sees the same God she's describing as the glorified Jesus, who she now believes. 
And he says to her, I am he who is. Wow. Same words as Moses. So on and on and on. I mean, there are these stories from all over the world. And, and what I'm trying to do in this and what I think pastors can do is show that God has always been the God of all nations. And who these people are describing is the same God of love and compassion and mercy that he talks to Moses about in Exodus 34, right? But also a God of justice. And they talk about that. Santosh talks about he's very holy. And what's that holiness like? I got another neurologist who who died and in God's presence, he's describing his holiness. And he said, it was purity and innocence, but but not like we think of purity and innocence. In, the, in, in light of what I was experiencing, I saw what I'm not. Wow. I'm not that. That's what he said. Amazing. And so you, you hear these people talk about the mysteries and the majesty of God, the wonders of God, and even the Trinity. So how do you explain a Jewish girl you know, and and um, uh, an, an, an agnostic who are shown and describe the triune God, but in words that they said in there, it makes sense. Wow. Here, it, it doesn't make sense to us. But there, the question, how can three be one doesn't even come up. <laughs> it's not wow. a question. Wow. And, and now let me address this because, you know, Christians will be like, well, are you talking about universalism? No. No, what we're talking about, remember, you know, the Lord Jesus appeared as a brilliant blinding light to Paul, Saul, when he was not a believer, right? Yeah. And something else to note, Jesus does not tell him what to do. He says, go to the city, you'll be told. And then he sends Ananias. And so a lot of people have a problem that this God of light and love, people feel in unconditional love they just feel like they are so loved by him they also get a life review where they see very clearly their their kind loving deeds and their and their sins very clearly and they're very convicted but he's loving them and people get confused by that but that is who god is he is love he can't not love the children he created even if they choose to reject him and so not every, just because an NDE sees God, that doesn't mean they're right with him. Yeah. You know, Revelation 1, 7 says, every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. So I think these are just testimonies that God is giving. And, and, and by the way, this is also not the crossing over into eternity. You know, Hebrews uh, 9, 27 says it's appointed for mankind to die once and then comes the judgment. Yeah. And I quote in Imagine the God of Heaven, where sometimes Jesus is telling them, you haven't died yet, you have to go back. Mm. But they were they had no brainwaves. So mm. it was clinical death, but it was not eternal death. And there was also a commonality I reported in Imagine Heaven, that there's a border or a boundary that these people who have NDEs knew they can't cross and still come back. Wow. So I think that's the crossing over. And I think that's why so many of them could cry out for forgiveness still and still be rescued, still be saved. They they were coming back. That's amazing. Well, I can't wait to listen and or read uh, the new book. Thank you for the ways you're helping us get the message about Jesus out there. Love teaming with you all these years. Excited for this next season. Thank you so much, John. No, thanks, Eric.